Hey guys, and welcome to my DIY channel. Today's video is gonna be so awesome. We're doing some backyard games for the summer, and this video is sponsored by Cricut. So get excited to see all of the amazing things that I made in this video using my Cricut. So we're gonna be making some cornhole boards first. Here is the um, measurements that you're gonna need. So screenshot this. All right, so to get started, we're gonna be using a piece of wood that is four feet long and two feet wide with two different types of grit of sandpaper. So we're gonna be using a heavier one at first at 180, and then we're gonna go over it again with 320. Yes, it's very fine, and it makes the boards baby smooth. Okay, so the measurements that I just showed you guys are the measurements that we're gonna be doing. So we have to cut a hole up in the top part of this board. So the hole needs to be six inches down from the top of the board and of course center. The hole radius is gonna be six inches wide. So by the time you actually cut the hole, when you measure from the top of the board down to the center of the hole, it's gonna be nine inches. If that doesn't make any sense, go back and look at that um, measurement, that will help. I also wanted to protect the laminate on this board when I cut the circle out, so I did use some tape so that it helped me to protect that when I cut it. And then um, I nailed this into the center of the board and I measured out the radius. So since we're gonna be doing a six inch circle, I did a three inch radius so that I could get um, a, six inch, a six inch hole, you guys. I, I literally had to like bust out my math and I was struggling. You can see that I struggled because look, look at that outside hole. I accidentally measured the hole like nine inches because I misread the directions. But the good thing is, is I didn't cut it and my husband checked it before I cut it so that I didn't mess this up. So we're nice and centered, everything is measured, and we are now cutting out the hole for the cornhole boards, and it does measure a perfect six inches. So the diameter is six inches across, perfectly. And then just using my jigsaw puzzle, I cut that out and removed all of the tape, and it actually worked really well to keep my wood from chipping, because I want this to be as smooth as possible. So again, you guys, this project, you have to be very patient in building these cornhole boards because there is so much sanding involved. You want these boards to be so smooth because the idea of the game is you're gonna be throwing bags of corn, hence cornhole. You're gonna be throwing bags of corn in onto the board in hopes that it will slide up and go into the hole or just land right in the hole. So after lots of sanding, I went ahead and we're gonna be drilling the, or excuse me, we're gonna be putting, dr screwing the top of the board to the frame that we're making. So this is actually a countersink hole for your screws. So I drilled all the holes. Here's what it looks like before you do the countersink. So see how it makes this nice little divot for your screws? This is really nice because then your screws go down and deep in your wood so that you can fill them and make it really smooth. So then I went ahead and using some primer, I got it primed and then after that was dry, here we are sanding again using really, really fine grit sandpaper at 320 is the grit that we're using. I only use the heavier grit on the very, very first layer of the board. After that, after each layer, I'm just gonna be using the 320 because this just makes it super, super smooth, but it keeps the paint in place. But like I said, we want this to be very, very slick. And then wipe off all of the dust from your sanding because we're, we're, we're gonna be painting this again. This ends up getting a total of about five layers, no, six layers, about six layers once we're done. So one layer of primer, and then I'm gonna be doing two layers of this teal. This is a vintage teal in the Rust-Oleum brand. And so we're gonna be um, doing two layers of this, but we let each layer dry really well, and I sand in between each layer. All right, so now we're gonna build the frame because you guys have seen me paint and sand and paint and sand. So moving on to the frame, we're also sanding this really well. This is one by four. Um, I did make them once with two by fours, but it just makes the board super heavy. So this is a lot lighter. I went ahead and I pre-drilled the holes for the screws because this just helps your wood so much to not split when you drill into these holes. And so, and then, um, it holds really well when you screw it together, like really well. And then using this corner clamp right here, I went ahead and lined these up for my frame because we are gonna be making a rectangle, but of course we want the corners to be perfect and nice and 90 degree. So once I had those in there, then I was able to tip that up and use my drill to put these screws in to our holes. And you can see right there that you really don't get a lot of wood damage or wood splitting because we pre-drilled these holes. So 
We're also gonna be putting a piece of wood right here in the middle of the frame to help support the middle of the board for when the bags hit the board. They don't bounce as much because they have that extra support. So same thing, pre-drill the holes and then screw in the middle piece of wood right there. So in just a minute, you will see our entire frame here as we get it all stained in the color espresso, or I guess right now you're seeing it, but we're gonna get this all stained and I do this twice because we're making two cornhole boards. All right guys, we're using our Cricut. So this is the cutout that I used for the circle. So I made sure that it was six inches in the middle and I went ahead and I got that cut out. We're also gonna be putting a design on. Okay, so I went, in, I went ahead and I searched flamingos. What? <laughs> I went ahead and I searched flamingos and I found this cute saying that says, let's get flamingo and I loved it. So this is just in the Cricut design space and so I am in Canvas right now creating this and I'm sizing it out because I'm gonna be using the vinyl as stencil. And then I wanted these leaves because here in a minute you're gonna see me use the a flamingo. So since this is such a big project, we are gonna be using our 24 inch mat, but I'm gonna show you right here, I want everything onto the same mat. So if you see those that um, little spot that I just clicked on right there, click that and it will drop down that little drop down bar, click on the top one, and then it will let you select the mat. So see right here, when you click onto the mat, it's basically saying, select which one you want to combine these on. So you can see that I was able to bring the leaves over to the same mat as the Let's Get Flamingo so that I could have this cut all together here and we're using the longer um, mat in which it just asked me right there. So I do have a 24 inch mat and that way I'm able to get these because the cornhole boards are four inches long so I need a bigger project. And so I have the Cricut Maker. I don't have the smart one yet so I do still have to use a mat but here we are just selecting our material and then we went ahead and we cut it. So right here you can see me struggling. Don't, you guys don't do this. I was too, I was trying to be lazy and quick and not use transfer tape. Don't do that because it looks like this, it's a disaster. But we do end up eventually getting it fixed. I didn't save me any time. I actually cost me a ton of time. But I got this on to where I wanted it and I am now decorating around the cornhole. So I of course protected the rest of the board just using a trash bag and some tape sprayed it with some yellow spray paint and here we have the sunshine so it looks like your cornhole bag or your corn bag will be sliding right up into a little ray of sunshine so here we are weeding and transferring vinyl just the whole process like I said we're using this as um, stencils and so using the tools that come with Cricut which are absolutely essential you guys these tools make it so easy to do this project the squeegee the tools with weeding it's, it's just incredible. I, I can't recommend these things enough because the tools make all the difference. So weeding all the vinyl out in the middle and so here you can see it's all in place and we're using this as a stencil, like I said, so that we could do all of the fun different colors. So I am using a trash bag, lots of tape, and some of the vinyl paper that I peeled some of this off and some of the transfer paper to just kind of protect the board as we move this around to do this all different colors. And of course we're spray painting it really good and I do peel it off from the board while it is still wet because I don't want it to bleed through the sides. But the vinyl works fantastic as a stencil. Moving on real quick, I wanted to show you guys this. After we drilled the um, top of the board to the frame, which the battery died and I lost the entire thing of footage, but here is where this is. This is the other board that we're doing and here you can see that we have mudded off those screw holes so that we can make them that is so random. Why is that right there? I don't understand why that's right there. But anyways, okay, just so you guys can see, I jumped around just a little bit. But here we did the words, let's get flamingo, because I thought that was so cute. Like I said, I found it on Cricut. I think that other clip was supposed to be right here. But anyways, here we are. Now we're doing a cute summer pineapple, and I wanted the glasses to be a different color. And so I did those first, let that dry, and then um, I will show you the rest. Okay, so I wanted, the other board said, let's get flamingo. So I wanted this board to say sweet summertime. So I just went into Cricut Canvas and I put in the text that I wanted it to say. And then here you can see me just kind of playing around with the fonts. Um, I just use the fonts that Cricut has. And if you have the subscription to Cricut, you have access to so many fonts. Here in just a minute, you'll see this drop down. I mean, that was really fast, but look at all of those fonts that you can pick from. So I just picked one that I thought looked really, really cute. 
and then turn these. Um, you just t type in 90 degrees and enter that and it will turn them for you. That way you can elongate them and I measured them out to about 23 inches so that they would go down the side of the pineapple. So then we cut out the pineapple as well and then um, we sectioned it off so that we could do the, the top of the pineapple green and then of course the rest of the pineapple yellow. So this is just the process of pulling everything off and putting everything I guess back on. That doesn't make any sense but putting the vinyl on, spraying everything and then peeling it off. So here we are weeding the vinyl, transferring it and you can see that I didn't do the sunshine on the top circle of that board. I completely forgot and I moved on to the center of the board. I actually recommend doing, if you're going to do anything around the circle of the board, do it first because then it will help you eyeball where you can put your little decal for the center of your board. Because you can see where I forgot about it. I was like, oh shoot, and my decal is up a little bit higher than what I want, but my husband said that nobody will notice. I feel like everybody will notice. He says nobody will notice. So. Um, you'll probably notice because I of course pointed it out, but hopefully when people come over to play cornhole They won't all notice. So here we are sanding it again very lightly And this is just with the 320 grit sandpaper to knock down all of the edges. Here's the afterthought of the Circle right here. I had to make this video very very fast you guys And so I'm really sorry It's just already so long because there's so many steps to the projects that we're making today and so I apologize for this being so fast, but this is already such a long video that I needed to cruise. So I'm actually trying to keep up myself with like doing the voiceover. But I wanted the edges, now I sanded down the edges after filling the screws, but I wanted to kind of conceal them just a little bit more and give the board a trim. And so, wow, this is going so fast. Okay, hold on. We trim the board. This is cutting off the feet, so you can see that we cut off a slant. These are 11 and a quarter of an inch because we want the cornhole board to be standing up 12 inches off the ground. So then we pre-drilled holes and we drilled the legs on. That was really, really fast. Now we are putting on a varnish. So here you can see where I skipped ahead. Um, the outside of the board, the yellow part is where I trimmed it and I did this on both boards. And then this is just a, a self-layering um, lacquer. It's just a like a varnish or a finish and you want this to be very 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 smooth so I put this on I let it dry it does take a total of about 24 hours to cure between each coat and so I sanded it down and then I did a couple other coats but here they are you guys here they are I apologize for the speediness of that tutorial if you guys have any questions please let me know I can help answer those questions but um, like I said, I didn't want to keep you, I didn't want to hold you hostage all day with the video, so we cruised right along there. But here are the two boards together, all ready to go, ready to play some cornhole. And I love how they turned out, you guys. You can do anything with your Cricut. You can decorate your boards any way you want with your Cricut. And you don't have to use the vinyl as stencils. You could actually use it as a decal and just transfer it on and then use the lacquer. It will fill in the divots, but I just wanted to use all of these different colors. So just in case you need this again, here are the distances and the measurements of the board. Okay, moving on to the next game. These are just some old root beer bottles that um, we, you can just get from the store. I cleaned these out really good. I used some vinegar, soaked them in some vinegar water, vinegar and hot water and soap and cleaned off the labels. And, and then I took them out, nailed some nails into a two by four and then propped the bottles up and spray painted them. Using some scrap wood, I went ahead and I got that sanded. And here we are, that was that first piece was the base. These two pieces and the ones on the ground are gonna be the sides. So we pre-drilled the holes, as you saw, and now we are screwing this together to make a box very, very quickly. And you see a lot of my head because I wanted to make sure that I was getting a lot of power pushed into drilling those down. So, all right, now we're gonna put this onto the bottom. We're gonna screw this on to the bottom right there so that this board holds extremely well. And this is what we're doing while those bottles that we just spray, pa spray painted are drying. So again, sanding, staining, this is in the color Jacobian. And after I stained the projects, I sprayed them with a finishing spray just to protect it from like the elements and being outside and stuff like that. So, as well as the bottles. And then we gave it some, um, whitewashing a little bit and then of course here we are using our Cricut again I just typed up the word ring toss transferred this on 
and protected the edges and we just spray paint this on right here and then I do run the sander over it just a little bit and make it look a little bit smooth and vintage and then using some rope that you can get from the Dollar Tree with some burlap we are going to be making several rope rings so the rope is about eight inches long and then I just glued it together and wrapped the burlap around it to hold the ring in place just like you see here and I made about 12 of these and so I actually like the burlap just a little bit skinnier so and then it's time to glue these in because I don't want these to move around and fall out and risk being broke so I just rearranged the colors so they were super assorted and then we're going to be using some all-purpose Gorilla Glue. I use this in place of um, uh, E6000, but you can use that if you would like because that will work as well. But we go ahead and we get these glued down and I let these dry for like a day just to make sure that they were nice and secure and ready to go. And with that, you guys, this is so easy. This is basically like a trash to treasure almost. A trash to treasure DIY from your root beer bottles or any other bottles, any beverage of choice really. And... Here we have a fun outdoor ring toss game, especially for the kids, you guys. This one is a hit. So while the adults play cornhole, then the kids can play ring toss. And they do pretty good at leaving you alone if they have something to do like this. And so here we are trying to play some ring toss. This is me. I'm pretty terrible. I won't even tell you how many times I had to throw that in order to get that shot. But it's really fun, you guys. I also kind of splattered the bottles with a little bit of paint to make them look kind of fun and multicolored. And then I did put a finishing lacquer spray on them as well, just to protect them, to protect the paint. We want to protect the wood. The wood you can see is sitting in grass, and so if there's any moisture in the grass, the wood will be protected for longer because we sprayed the bottom to protect it from any moisture. So there you go. That, that is our second backyard game. All right, guys, and now we're going to be using this really thin wood. Like I said, this is one by four inch wood. And these planks each measure four feet, and I'm dividing them into threes. Measuring out the piece of wood you can see right here, and we're gonna be cutting what's called a dado line. So right here, I'm measuring up and I'm bringing the blade down so that it's only half the width of the blade. So I'm gonna run the blade over that section, over it and over um, several times. Like we're gonna be doing this over and over and over to create a section that I'm cutting out of the wood to create a large groove for the wood to sit into so that the boards kind of lock. I want them to interlock into place. So each board gets two of these dado lines that are about three and a half inches wide because that's how wide each piece of wood is. Even though it's called a one by four, it's not actually um, accurately four inches wide. It's more like three and a half to three and a three quarters. And so I measured the wood where I kind of showed you before and here's a front really quick view but you just keep running it over your blade and you can see that it doesn't cut all the way through the wood it just cuts out about halfway creating that groove that you can see there as I'm staining it. Sanded this down really really good as well to make it smooth and then using a plate I'm making a pattern for my own um, O's because we're going to be doing some fun yard tic-tac-toe. So using a ruler, I measured out the X's that I want and then of course the plate for the O's and so that they fit perfectly into the square and then just using my jigsaw, which you guys, this is probably one of my favorite saws. This, this and my chop saw are my top favorite saws because I feel that the possibilities are endless. I do use my table saw a lot, but you guys, if you don't have a table saw, these are the two saws I recommend. But here you can see that we are doing, in fact, wow, I think I... I think I slow mode this for you guys. Um, I don't know if I meant to do that, but there you go. There's like a slow action. That Okay, that looks like my finger was in the way. It wasn't, I promise. I still have my finger. Um, sorry for that perception, and I promise I'm really safe when I use my saws. So I don't know why it looked like that because it wasn't even in the way. But now we're cutting out the holes, and then I cut out the center of the holes to make O's, and the whole time I was cutting, I thought I was filming, but again, it was another one where my battery died because I spent a lot of time on these projects and sometimes I missed when my battery died. So here are the O's that are cut out from this plywood and I am just spray painting these in two different colors. So the O's are white and then the X's are that vintage teal that you saw me paint the cornhole boards on. And then I sanded this down using that really fine grit sandpaper, the 320, mostly just to make these smooth, you guys. Use that fine, fine sandpaper and it makes the surface just baby smooth, just silky smooth right across the top. 
And then we're gonna come back to my Cricut and we are going to be cutting out some designs to decorate this. So right here you can see we are, since it's a tic-tac-toe board, um, I wanted to just label it kind of fun for the, the board. So I just did tic-tac-toe and then on the bottom board I did three in a row. And you will see that in just a minute. And then here we are of course just playing with the fonts and sizing it out to where I need it. That's what's awesome about the Cricut is you can just put it exactly where you need to. And then I cut that out and here we are using it again as a stencil so that I can just paint it and sand it and have it be quick and ready to go. So putting this vinyl on and then we're of course going to protect the wood a little bit and then get this all spray painted in place right here just using the color white so that you can see it contrast really well against the stained wood. And then you'll see me do the other one here in just a minute. This will be that, that top board that will lay on the top. And I also did the dado lines on the bottom side of this board so that you don't see them, but in then the, the bottom boards, so the two boards that are on the bottom have the dado lines on the top, and then the two boards on the top have the dado lines on the bottom. So raise your hand if you're thoroughly confused with what I just tried to explain because my hand's in the air, for sure. But um, the boards that are on top, just remember that they do lock into place, but you don't see the data line. And then I just wanted some cute little summer decals. I don't actually end up using all of these, but I went through and picked a whole bunch of them. But I just wanted to see that like all of the possibilities with Cricut are endless. So I just sized them down so that I could do something fun with each one, played with it a little bit, and then cut them out. So here you can see that I am just doing a little bit. I didn't want to do the whole X's and O's. I wanted this to be just more like a little embellishment. So I thought this cute little bikini garland was so darling. <laughs> so we put that on there. And then for the O's, there's just a cute little sunshine, a cute little orange slice, an ice cream cone that says life is sweet, a cute little camp trailer because we love to go camping. And then... Um, the rest of the X's right here, one says sunshine, of course you can see a little popsicle, and then the lemon. You guys, like I said, the possibilities are endless with your Cricut. That's one of my favorite things about it, is you literally could decorate these however you wanted. Like, instead of just a tiny little embellishment, you could put a big embellishment, or however you want. So here is the board by itself. It's locked into place. So those data lines crisscross everywhere you see like a perpendicular cross, they're actually locked into place from the data lines, but I didn't glue them because I wanted to be able to pick it up for storage. So, but that's how you can get the boards to lay perfectly square is by putting those data lines into a locking place. So here you can see, I just threw those on. Um, here in just a minute, I'll give you a little bit more of a close up of each one of the cute decals right here. And you have another fun game for the kids that if the kids can't play cornhole with you, this is another thing that will keep them entertained so that they leave you alone and don't run up and climb all over your cornhole boards. So you guys, that's it for this video. That was definitely long enough, but I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think. Make sure you check out the description box down below for all of the extra goodies. And thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited to keep using it and to keep showing you guys what I have. Again, thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys.